I'm Pat, and I currently work as an interaction designer at Google. I'm uh, Stephanie Grace. I'm the program manager for sustainability and ESG at IBM. My name is Oscar Waltines. Uh, I am a software engineer at uh, Google, specifically in the AI for social good team. My name is Anastasia, and I'm a product manager at IBM, um, part of Invisi, a company that IBM acquired not too long ago. I currently work in the Google Maps for Auto team. So that's essentially navigation experiences in Android Auto or cars that come with Android pre-built. My day-to-day -day responsibilities uh, involve like coming up with new ideas for like um, feature updates, um, designing those ideas uh, from like low-fi wireframes, iterating the design to hi-fi prototypes, and then also collaborating with others. So collaborating with product managers and software engineers to bring the designs to life uh, through implementation and uh, the engineering process. And then also I collaborate with other designers a lot uh, to make overall design improvements to the entire app. ESG uh, stands for Environmental, Social and Governance. And it's a framework that a lot of companies are using or rather analysts are using to help evaluate uh, performance of companies and um, the how important it would be to invest in those companies uh, in the longer term. And what I do is divide it into two separate categories. First, um, I do AI outreach. And as part of that, I make sure that third parties that um, you know, are external to Google are able to utilize AI in their respective domains. And then the other part that I work in is in my own team's projects, which is a collection of miscellaneous different things. Invisi is a sort of enterprise software, so think software for large companies that want to track all of their factors that may be relating to sustainability. So anything from emissions to how much paper you're using, all of that Invisi can track, capture, use sort of industry standard and accounting standard um, levels of processing to get you the insights that you need and to then transform that into what we call operationalizing sustainability which means putting all of the information that you get into actionable insights and actionable plans, making um, clear improvements that you can then put back into Invisi and track and see how you're going. And it's both for sort of retrospective to see how you went in your previous years, all the way to forecasting and um, predicting what your uh, patterns and what your emissions may be like in the future to see if you're on the track to meet any sort of goal or any sort of legislation that was set out. If you're going to operationalize something, you need to be considering how your products and your offerings integrate. So it's not just a silo of capability here and here, they need to be able to talk to each other. Bringing creative thinking to that kind of problem is essential. You're going to have multiple different stakeholders. They're going to have different points of view and they're going to be talking on different levels. And so as a designer and as a creative, your role is to help facilitate those conversations. Creativity to me is about solving problems in non-obvious ways. Uh, by that, I mean that you, know, you start with a, a known problem, which may or may not have known solutions. And instead of taking uh, what would be by most people, the logical steps from you know, the problem stage to the actual solution, uh, you take uh, some of the premises in a way that most other people would not. I feel creativity is involved in a lot more of the day-to-day -day that I do. Creativity is really not a tokenistic or performative thing at all. It's highly ingrained in the way we work. It's encouraged. A lot of people fall into the trap of thinking that, you know, creativity is something that you do. Everyone goes like, hey, that's really cool, but let's go for a more sensible way of going about it. But that's really not something that companies can afford anymore. Uh, it's something that is absolutely necessary to stay ahead of the curve and 
to solve these new modern problems. As a designer, um, creativity is important. Um, firstly, to come up with those new ideas um, on how to tackle like a user problem. Um, secondly, also like uh, creativity in terms of uh, like the visuals and also the design of the app is important as well to make things stand out, um, like easier to read, uh, easier to use. Creativity and innovation are obviously at the at the core of Google as a company, more so in Google research. Uh, in many cases, we are trying to solve problems in which we don't even know if there's a solution. Uh, so it, it, it is almost a requirement that you need to think creatively because there's no template. There's no, no way for you to really understand if what you're doing is achievable. We're hoping it is. We obviously pick problems that are, are hard but hopefully solvable. Uh, but the reality is that we, we don't know. So I think something that is creative is first, we see a creative solution as being something that is able to articulate the essence of a problem in a way that you might not have initially considered. I think a second characteristic of something that's creative is being able to draw analogies from one domain, perhaps it's related, perhaps it's not related, and see how that applies in another domain and use that to find not necessarily solutions, but different ways to approach that problem and address that problem. Uh, when I came in, um, I was also working with a design agency that was partnering with us at the time. But this idea of really sitting down with the customer requirements and not taking things at face value was both creativity and new processes. And people welcomed it. I actually ended up doing a small educational series of meetings with some of my colleagues that do similar report bills. And I introduced them to the way that I logically approach a problem like that. And um, I use that once again, I love my metaphors, but I use the metaphor of building a house. You have your floor plan and you figure out where things are going to be. You don't start putting up wallpaper and lamps before you've finished your floor plan and you've got your furniture in and you know which room is going to be the bedroom. Um, and it was really amazing to see people really willing to learn and really open to hearing these new things. Um, and it was a really rewarding experience to share my knowledge and then see it applied in practice around me. It's really important to foster collaboration and uh, creativity um, uh, within that collaboration as well. So I'll do things like host collaboration workshops with my stakeholders to get ideas from them. So through those workshops and through like uh, collaborating with other designers, I'm able to leverage their ideas and their creativity and then apply that within my own projects. One of the examples that I've used in the past is getting people together in a room, making it feel like it's not a formal meeting, but more of a, a workshop, a casual conversation, but with artifacts. And I think in many cases, people work better when they've got something concrete in front of them that they can look and digest that content and reflect on it. Um, an example of a project in which we applied creativity recently, we were working on re-identifying um, marine invertebrates, specifically sea stars. Traditionally, when you're trying to re-identify animals from uh, images, from camera data, you try to apply some computer vision techniques to it and try to look for like some kind of marking uh, depending on the animal, they may have some spotting in the skin or they may have some specific features that you can try to target to be able to make a distinction between two different individuals. What we did that I thought was an, an innovation and a creative way to solve the problem is to apply what we had learned in the space of face recognition, which has been a problem that you know we have been working on, not by we, I mean the technology industry, not just Google, have been working on for decades, if not longer, being able to identify individuals based on images. Uh, and then apply that, the, those same learnings, those same concepts, into the animal reidentification domain. And in doing so, we were able to get, um, achieve state-of-the-art results. 
just by uh, thinking a little bit outside the box and trying to go in a different path. Creativity is a muscle and I'm sure it's been said over and over again, but it does require practice. You're going to meet all different kinds of people throughout your journey and learning to work with all of them is a creative challenge in its own. Creativity is a consistent practice um, and it's a conscious choice of not giving up at the first sight of a challenge and really pushing through and seeing how you could get around something and how can you achieve the result you were wanting even with some sort of restrictions or adversity in place.